Right in the middle of the Bible, there's this collection of Hebrew love poems that are so explicit and erotic that young Jewish boys weren't even allowed to read them until they were older. Now, Song of Songs gives us like a picture, a series of pictures of the relationship between a man and a woman. The joy, the struggle, the complexity. It's almost as if the love that this couple is exploring has a life of its own. The woman says several times, she says, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. It's almost as if she says, you know, whatever this is, it's so good, it's so beautiful, and we can't do anything to mess this up. We get incredible mileage out of this tired, old English word, love, don't we? I mean, we'll tell somebody that we love them, and then in the same breath, we'll talk about how much we love a new car or a certain pair of pants. I mean, I love my wife, and I, I also love tacos. Now, we have to keep in mind that Song of Songs was originally written in the Hebrew language, which has at least three different words for our English word, love. The first word we find is the word, raya. Raya would be translated literally as like friend or a companion, somebody you hang out with. We might even translate it as uh, like the word uh, soulmate. We hear people talk like this all the time. They'll say things like, you know, she's, she's my best friend or I can tell him anything. These are all expressions of Raya. And so we see that at the core of this relationship between these lovers, there's a friendship. Another Hebrew word we find for love is ahava. Ahava is deep affection. It's that sense of desiring to be with someone so much that your heart aches. Ahava is when your mind and your heart are bent towards your lover with such passion and intensity that you can think of little else. Now, my wife and I, we were friends for four years, four years of raya, before anything more happened. And I was living in Los Angeles, and one weekend she came out to visit. So we went out for the first time. And there was a sense of anticipation in the air, this question we both had. You know, is there any, is there any ahava to go with our raya? I remember sitting there at this restaurant in Santa Monica, a couple blocks in from the ocean. I remember this feeling came over me. That I would, I'd rather be here with her at this moment than anywhere else in the universe. The lovers in Song of Songs declare that Ahava is as strong as death, that many rivers cannot quench Ahava. Ahava is love of the will. Now this is way more profound than fleeting romantic feelings. This is much more than like temporary urges. Ahava is making a decision to join your life to the life of another. This is an emotion that leads to commitment, that leads to joining your life to somebody else's. Ahava is what makes things last. Maybe this would help. Let's think of these loves 
these dimensions to a relationship as flames. Okay, first we had our Raya flame. That's like the friendship, the soulmate aspect of a relationship. And then you have your Ahava flame, which is the flame of uh, commitment and making a decision to join your life to another. But there's a third Hebrew word for love that we find in Song of Songs. It's the word Dode. Dode is translated in English literally as to carouse, to rock, or to fondle. I think you get the idea behind this flame. This word is used elsewhere in scriptures, like in the book of Proverbs. It says, let us drink deep of dode till morning. And the woman even says in Song of Songs, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your dode is more delightful than wine. Dode is the physical sexual element to a relationship. This is where we get uh, the Greek word eros, which is translated literally as like erotic in the English language. So we have our raya flame, we have our ahava flame, and we have our dode flame. So when this man and woman come together, all these flames get combined. Now Jesus talks about this idea of entire beings coming together. He uses the phrase one flesh to describe this connection between a man and a woman. Now this one flesh is way more than just a physical act. I mean, it's emotions, it's hearts, it's minds, it's experiences. It's the mingling of souls. And so this coming together physically becomes a picture of a deeper spiritual reality. So Jesus teaches us that sex is ultimately a spiritual act. And that something so beautiful, something so powerful, was meant to endure forever. See, the one flame burning all by itself will never be as hot as all the flames burning together. I mean, we were created for all the flames to burn as one. I mean, think about all the ways that we mess this up. I mean, take an affair for an example. An affair is two people sharing the dode flame, but without any of the other flames. Without the raya or the ahava. I mean, there's no friendship. There's no commitment. There's no loyalty, no sacrifice. And, I mean, there's dode, but there's no raya or ahava. It's two people trying from this one flame, the dode flame, to get all the heat of the three flames burning together. I mean, no wonder it leaves a person empty and unfulfilled. We were created for so much more. And so the person keeps coming back to this one flame over and over again, and yet it never truly satisfies. It can't. Or how about the couple who have been married for years and they're still together. There's still some commitment. I mean, there's still some ahava, but let's be honest, there's not much else. There's no friendship. There's no sex. And they neglect the flames and eventually they flicker and they fade and they go out. When you separate the flames, it can never really satisfy. It's like you're living outside how God wired you to live. I mean, maybe our culture has no clue what true sexuality really looks like. Maybe the world around us, when it comes to sex, just doesn't get it. I mean, true sexuality is vast and mysterious. It involves all of you. I mean, you have a body, but you also have a soul and a spirit. And love is two people coming together and giving all of themselves to each other forever. And now, may you honor the way that God created you. May you have a profound sense of respect for the fact that you are a deeply spiritual and mysterious being and that love is ultimately a profoundly spiritual thing. May you realize that the three flames are meant to burn together and may 
you discover the big flame.